What is up everyone? Welcome back to the Master Drone Whiskey Room for my first video of 2024, and it's a good one. Today we have the newest expression from Old Forester, the first addition to the Whiskey Row series since 2018's 1910 Old Fine Whiskey. It's the Old Forester 1924 10-year-old. After some photos popped up on social media, a lot of folks thought that the 1924 10-year-old could make itself available by the end of the year or just before the end of the year. And in some places, it did. I have a viewer named Ben who sent me the sample of the new Old Forester. Let's try it, come right back, it's the Mash and Drum. What's up folks, I'm Jason C for The Master and Drum. Welcome back to the show. Like, subscribe, and help me hit that 100,000 subscriber milestone here in 2024. Appreciate the support. Now the new Old Forester 1924 10 year old is bottled in celebration of the 100th year of Osley Brown blending together barrels of different mash bills at his downtown Louisville location and bottling them under the Old Forester name. Now because of that, Old Forester has chosen to create this special bottling. Now, at a time when distillers seem to be bringing back age statements, Old Forester has really fallen behind in that regard, at least on their readily available whiskeys. Now, when you talk about their limited releases, Old Forester Birthday Bourbon usually carries an age statement between 9 to 12 years. Uh, President's Choice Barrels can carry age statements around 7 to 10 years, I think I've seen. And then you have King Kentucky, which comes in around 14 to 18 years old. Now the prevailing theory is the non-use of age statements in their non-limited offerings comes down to one thing, the use of heat cycled warehouses. Most of Old Forester's lineup, like the Signature, 1910, 1920, really have actual ages roughly about four to six years old. But with a heat cycling effect, essentially could come off a little bit older. So really the only way to age a bourbon more delicately over a long period of time is to move the barrels to a non-heat cycled warehouse, which I think they have two of now, or just turn off the heat cycling to avoid a tannic and over oaked and bitter bourbon. When I spoke to Jackie Zykin about this a while back when she was still at Old Forester, I was there lucky enough to do a barrel pick and she had mentioned she liked Old Forester at a lower proof, really around that 100 proof area, rather than barrel proof because watering it down got rid of the harsh proof and some of that tannic oak from those heat cycled warehouses. Now the other fun thing to speculate on is that since this is an anniversary of Osley Brown blending different mash bills, this could be a blend of Old Forester Standard Mash Bill uh, and the Early Times Mash Bill, which I think they still use in Cooper's Craft 100, which is one of my favorite budget bottles. Apparently, Old Forester still does make the Early Times Mash Bill in small quantities, even though it was technically sold to Sazerac. All right, so the stats of the new Old Forester 1924, obviously 10 years old, 100 proof this comes in at, starting to roll out now, and I believe the SRP on this is about 115 bucks. All right, so let's check out the color. Pretty dark here for an Old Forester, which I dig. So this is my new favorite glass, ladies and gentlemen. This is called the Aish glass, and they are um, expensive. They're like $50 a glass. And uh, I got these as a gift for Christmas. I really uh, wanted to try these glasses out after trying it for the first time somewhere else. And, you know, I'm not always one to be like, oh, this glass is better than this one, but this glass really does make a difference. This is, I think, what the tasters in Scotland use when they're um, the master blenders are uh, tasting scotch and stuff. So I figured I'd give it a try. Here we go. Well, this definitely comes off like Old Forester. There's that unique note I always get in Old Forester that if it's too much, I hate it. If it's not too bad, I can deal with it. And right now it's not too bad, so I could deal with it. And that's that acetone note that I get. It literally smells like nail polish remover to me. That 10 year like oak profile really does come through. It's not overly oak though. There's some sweetness here. I get a little bit of like a shortbread cookie. Maybe like poached pears and like cinnamon, something like that. It's got a really nice nose to it. I think the one thing I was worried about this was the actual oak profile maybe being overdone. But like I said, if they kind of move those barrels around from the heat cycling, uh, the heat cycled warehouses, um, they could have controlled a little bit better here. This is really nice on the nose. Again though, that acetone note just gets me. If you've never really smelled acetone, think of like a shoe polish type note or furniture polish. And you know, you get your typical little little hint of banana bread there too, I think from the Old Forester. But so far, really nice nose. A lot more dense than you would get with like the Old Forester 1920, which we will compare it to. So let's give it a try. Way more fruit forward than I thought it would be. Really nice punch of oak, good toffee note. That banana bread on the back end, love that. 
All right, that's the first sip. Let's try another one here. I feel so bougie with this glass. <laughs> All right, so second sip, it's pretty light on the palate, not a big density to it, but at 100 proof, you're not really expecting a, you know, a, a huge mouthfeel. You would like it to be a little bit or have more texture to it, but it does get a little bit light here on the mid palate. However, I'm actually really surprised how fruit forward this is. Really nice notes of like apple, pear. I think there's some citrus uh, to be found as well. Maybe a little, maybe like orange, even like a lemon, but that could be getting into a little bit of like that acetone shoe polishy note that I was talking about earlier. But I think the main difference here, besides it being so fruit forward, is that oak presence. It really does have a nice oak presence for, a, uh, for an old forester. Yeah, same thing, third sip. It, it really does kind of um, get sweeter as it goes along. Third sip in, uh, you still get that nice oak punch up front, a little bit of black pepper. That acetone note is is still there, but it's actually tapering off a little bit and just giving me a nice uh, uh, fruit forward sweetness to it. When it comes to the finish, it's actually it has a nice spice to it. It's not super long, but it does carry a nice little spice there. Remember, you know, there's a good amount of rye in the uh, 18% uh, in, the, in the mash bill for Old Forester. It's a really nice bourbon to be honest. I, Am I overly impressed with it? No, but if this does become a regularly released bottle within the Whiskey Row series, now I don't know what could happen with the availability of this. This is an extension to the Whiskey Row series, which is pretty readily available. I think what could happen with this bottle is what we see with the 1910, where the 1910, as soon as it released, it disappeared off shelves. We didn't see it for a little while, and then it came back, and now it's pretty regularly available. Not sure what this is gonna happen given that it does have that high H statement. The fruit and the spice is there in the front of the palate. Again, along with that little bit of acetone, the banana bread is there very slightly, but I think the spice and that little bit of a, a, a tannic oak punch on the very end is kind of what keeps me interested in going back to this whiskey. All right, let's do a quick comparison to the 1920 and see how that comparison goes. Now, to be honest, I have not been a huge fan of the, uh, the 1920 lately. I think um, it has lost the chocolate cherry flavor that I used to love in 1920 that you found in the old labels, and now it's gone all, it's so banana heavy to me now, and I kind of miss that old, Old Forester 1920 profile. But this is the one that's available now, so this is the one we're gonna test it against. Oh yeah, it's night and day. Old Forester 1920, at least this version right now, um, heavy banana, heavy banana bread, spices there, I think there's a, a ton of apple to be found here too. Apple, pear, and bananas. I don't really get the acetone. I generally only get that acetone note on higher aged um, Old Foresters, typically like birthday bourbon. However, I think the last couple birthday bourbons have been absolutely awful. Thin, no finish. They gotta bring back birthday bourbon back to the glory days, man. Just saying. Yeah, the nose on the 1924 is, I'll say the nose is a hell of a lot better. All right, 1920. This has completely shifted what I used to like about 1920. Maybe a slight hint of like a maraschino cherry in there, but really it's just gone all like banana, apple, and pear for me. Maybe even a little bubble gum there too. You know what though, the 1920 has the better finish. The finish is, but again, 15 proof points higher. It's gonna do that. All right, 1924. Yeah, there's more depth to it. I think it has a little bit more of a sweetness to it. I think the banana is tamed down compared to the 1920. And on top of that, I even though the 1920 has a longer finish, I do think the 1924, however, is just, it just there's just some more depth to it. So a really nice addition to the, uh, to the Whiskey Row series. However, availability, well, we'll see what happens. All right, first final breakdown of 2024, here we go. All right, final breakdown on the brand new Old Forester 1924, 10 year old. Price on this one, 115 bucks, roughly. Resale market value right now, I'm seeing as high as $300. So, uh, and people are paying it, obviously. This is the same thing, like I mentioned earlier, that we saw with the 1910. As soon as this dropped and came out, people were eager to uh, either flip it or try to make some money on it before it became regularly available. So, we'll still see what happened with the 1924, which brings me into availability. Right now, I don't know how available this is gonna be. I'm just gonna say limited for now. Um, like I said, it could be very limited at first with a bigger rollout as it goes on, or is this gonna, even though it's still gonna be a Whiskey Row series edition, 
is it going to still come out sporadically throughout the course of the year rather than be a regular uh, item on the shelf? Uh, value for this one, at $115 for a 10 year old bourbon, I think a lot of people may complain about, you know, it being almost double the price of what Old Forester 1920 is. However, with Old Forester 1920 being about four to six years old, and this being 10 years old, I'm actually okay with it at $115. So if that is the MSRP, I'll say the value's even. The most I pay for this one, I would not overpay for this bourbon. If you see one for 300, 400, whatever it is, um, I really just think that's people capitalizing on the huge, uh, you know, the first release of this. I think right at $115 is where it should be. It's not a super high proof. It's got some really good depth to it, but I don't think it's anything that wows me that would, that would want me to overpay for it. So I'm actually really glad I got a sample beforehand. Now, if you can't find this and you want to try something with a little bit of a higher age and not break the bank, there's some really good alternatives. Three really jump to mind. I think you have Eagle Rare and you also have Russell's Reserve uh, 10 Year from uh, Wild Turkey. They're both in that same age range as the Old Forester 1924. They're about 90 proof. If you want to bump up the proof a little bit, go to Knob Creek 12 Year, which is 100 proof and actually cheaper than the Old Forester 1924. Actually, all of them are cheaper than the 1924. Now, recommendation, is this a skip? Is it a try before you buy? Is it a buy or is it a buy and back it up? I think for right now, I'm just gonna say it's a buy. I think it's a really nice bourbon from Old Forester. Um, really interesting profile. I like the depth of flavor to it. I like the fruit forwardness of it. Um, I like how it balances out. There's not too much of that acetone note, yet it's just enough there to let you know there's some age to it. I think it's definitely more layered than the 1920. However, the proof point on it being only 100 may sway some people from maybe trying this before you buy it, which I understand. But me loving a little bit more oak and a little bit more depth, I like this, especially for the price. And again, I wouldn't overpay for this one. All right, guys, thanks for watching my first video of 2024. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. And if you haven't yet, find me on Instagram. Thanks for all the support. I'll see you next time right here on The Mastin' Drum. Next video is gonna be my top bourbons of 2023. Stay tuned. Cheers, guys.